everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome to Kickstarter Look Back. This is where I take a look at projects that I have backed um, and over, you know, years ago or a couple years ago. I take a look at what I think about them now, if I've gotten them, just kind of a way to catch up on these different Kickstarter projects. So let's get started here today. So the first project that we have here is PAX Premier. Now this game, um, I got this one because this was very well regarded. And you know, honestly, I still haven't played this game. This is one that Mike Delisio talks about a lot, and I'm sure that it's actually a very good game. Um, the guys in my play group play it, but at this point, I wouldn't be able to infiltrate their group because they are just so good at the game, and I know that this one has a lot going on. So this is one of those games that's on my like catch a palooza list that Sure, I'd love to play at some point in time, but I don't know if I ever will. Because it has to be like with the right settings. I needed someone to teach and then a bunch of other new people at the table and the time to do so. That being said, I'm really glad I got this. I put it in the Dice Tower Library because I know a lot of people like it. And this production is a very good way to show simplicity of a game uh, but still have really good components. You don't need a gigantic box. Sometimes this is all you need. So, thumbs up for me on this one. Who Goes There Second Edition? Now, this is one I did not play the original, I mean, I played the original Who Goes There, and I thought there was a lot of problems with it. This is based on the original short story that The Thing comes from. But, um, there's, like I said, there's a lot of problems with that particular game. I've heard that many of those problems have been fixed. I heard the second edition, which, again, I got because I wanted to put it in the library, fixes a lot of that stuff. But I can't speak to that because I haven't replayed it. But man, this company sure knows how to make a great production. Stars of Akarios. So I actually just um, just reviewed this one actually with Chris. This is a big project. It made almost a million dollars. And the best way to describe this, because they describe it that way, is Gloomhaven in space. In fact, the decks is very similar. Actually, I think a better way to describe it would be X-Wing crossed with Gloomhaven with a side sprinkling of Seventh Continent, because that's what it is. Now, I think they probably, there's a lot of things they could have done better. There's a lot of problems with the game. The writing isn't great. The, um, the it's a little generic in many ways. You fight the same enemies over and over. The AI is kind of dumb. Uh, the seventh continent part exploring, I don't think works, but the spaceship content and the um, the way that works is pretty fun. So it's kind of a it's a mix. It's a little messy, but I actually really am on board with this company, and I look forward to seeing what they do next. I don't think this was a smashing success. It didn't blow the doors down like Gloomhaven did, but I do think it's a game worth talking about. Aquanauts, Discover the Deep. Well, if I look at this update here, which is August 24th, um, and it looks like this one may never come back because they're talking about they're going to stick to an update a month. <sighs> well, I don't know. This one looks interesting. I like the idea of a submersible base, resources, and all sorts of things but I don't know that this one is ever going to happen. So, oh well, maybe we can hope. Sanctuary, the Keeper's Era. So this is from Tabula Games. Tabula is known for their big games, Miss Thea, and um, uh, games like that. This one is feels and plays very much like a collectible card game with lanes and things like that. It looks pretty, but boy, oh boy, I did not think it was fantastic. I didn't think it was bad. It was just the very definition for me of a forgettable collectible card game. Now, I only played it once, so maybe it gets better as time goes by and stuff, but I'm having a hard time wanting to go back to this one that much. So, that's Sanctuary. Ankh, Gods of Egypt. Well, this was a huge project here. What would this one make? Uh, 22,000 backers, 3.3 million. No surprise here. This is the third in the trilogy of Blood Rage, Rising Sun, and Ankh. Now, interestingly enough, when this came out, a couple things were universally agreed on. 
best miniatures so far. The miniatures, especially the miniatures of the gods, you're an ancient Greek god, were unbelievable. The components, especially the upgraded components, I mean, look at this guy here, Sobek, what a fantastic um, model that was. So, you know, cool models, everyone agrees on that. Um, the gameplay itself was very, very divisive. There are people who think this is the best of the trilogy, and there are people who do not like it. I kind of fall somewhere in the middle in the sense that I think it's very well done. It plays very well two players and probably is the best two player in the trilogy. But I also think that there are the merge rule, which is very, very interesting. Also, I hate it. And I know a lot of people who hate it, but there's a lot of people who like it. Like I said, Ankh is definitely fairly divisive, but the people who do like it really do love it. Planet Unknown. Oh, this one makes me happy. This one made almost a quarter of a million dollars here. And I'm very excited. I think this is, um, I'm looking here. Let's take a real quick look. This is the sixth project that, okay, so he's done four humors since. So I, I don't know much about that one. Thrive was a you know an abstract strategy game, which I still people playing. Sword Crafters, fine. Truck Off was fine. This is the game that put them on the map, this Planet Unknown, I think. Planet Unknown with this spinning tray here that has all these different polyominoes in there. This is one of my favorite polyomino games, straight up. It is, I played this so many times this year. It's one of my most played games of 2022. The production, has a few small issues to, to it, but I'll tell you what, these different uh, polyomino tiles, putting them on a board, you know, kind of you spin that thing and then you pull one out, but everyone's pulling one out, moving up tracks, m different uh, planets and different uh, corporations, just really an intriguing game. I like it very much. I'm very happy with this one. Excavation Earth. So I've come to the conclusion that maybe Mighty Boards is just not a company for me. I mean... <laughs> uh, they quoted me on here it was my pick of the week I like that as a distinct theme I like the board I like the designer I like the components early reviews are pretty positive this one looks like a lot of fun yeah <laughs> well it's not very often that I, I get quoted on a game that I then kind of hate because I really do hate now I don't think that this is a bad game so it's kind of an interesting thing in a sense of I feel the same way about this one, like maybe Brass Birmingham and things like that. They're just not my style. This is so not my style. You are going around, finding artifacts, selling them, and it is so thinky, yet so mixed with, in my opinion, randomness, that is so mixed with kind of based on what other players do, but it plays like a fairly hefty economic game that just doesn't offer a lot of interesting choices to me. I just, man, Again, they're not going to do my new quote. My new quote is, Bleh, you know, but I know other people do like this game. It does well. I put it in the Dice Tower Library because there's a lot of interesting things. It is a nice production. Mighty Boards does well. It's just not my style. Tales from the Loop. Tales from the Loop is based on a, I guess, a series of paintings. Like, there's this art, and then there was art books, and then there was like technology in Scandinavia, and then there was a TV series, which I found to be completely boring. But you know what? The problem with this is the game is a little boring and a little random, and a terrible rule book. So there's that too. But it has neat miniatures, and it sounds cool. You're a bunch of kids getting out of school, going around and finding interesting things. It sounds cool, but it's very clunky in how the game plays, and like I said, just a little bit too much randomness in it. Ah, it's too bad because I really wanted to like this one. I will give them this. They tried something different. Shogun and Wallenstein Deluxe Upgrade Kits. This is from Queen Games. Um, these are okay. I did upgrade Shogun and Wallenstein. I like the fact that there's little meeples now that you drop into the cube tower. It's now a meeple tower. The metal coins are neat. These 3D pieces are neat. These upgrade tokens are neat. And yet it doesn't feel as nice of an upgrade as it could. In fact, I think there's a few pieces I didn't put in this. And it also is incredibly expensive. If you're a Queen fan, you are a poor person because they sure charge a lot for, like the stuff that they charge for here, like this upgrade kit, you get all this stuff. 118 euros, that's not a small amount to do that. Um, 
And you, there are other g games and stuff on Kickstarter that just come with this stuff involved. But it's nice. I didn't keep all of it. Um, like I said, I kind of picked and choose what went in my, my games. But it does make me want to bring Wallenstein and Shogun back to the table. The defense of Procyon 3. This is from David Turtsey, another one from David Turtsey. He did the previous um, Excavation Earth. I don't know much about this one. I did receive it. It looks cool. It does look a little generic, like humans versus aliens and all. Um, but I, there's not a lot I can say about this other than I just haven't got it to the table yet. Um, and it's hard for me to get it to the table because it looks like there's a lot of rules, a lot of things going on in this. And so I will play it at some point. I just don't know when. And then finally today, another game I haven't played but probably won't play, and that is the Rat Catcher, solo adventure board game. So this one here, a solo game. Uh, I believe Mike and or Z took a look at this. One or both of them did, and I can't remember what they said. So I'll let you go hunt down their reviews to see what they might think of this. I think the artwork for the game is pretty unique and interesting, very stylistic. The idea sounds cool. And I don't mind somebody coming on and making a solo only game on Kickstarter. I think that's a good idea. So, um, yeah. So the good thing is here, um, of these 12 projects, only one of them I have not got, which is the Aquanauts one. And it looks like that one may not happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Cool cover. But the rest of them, a lot of good ones. Of all the projects here, my favorite of these is actually Planet Unknown. I'm very happy with this one. Really cool, interesting game, and i like to see what they do next. So there you go, folks. That's all the different projects on my Kickstarter look back. Thanks for watching. Tell me which of these projects, if you played any of them, is your favorite. Until next time, I'm Tom Bassett. You've been watching Kickstarter Look Back on the Dice Tower.